Okay, so already introduced by uh, Mike. So I am Jade Yan, and I'm a um, teacher, assistant professor there. I started um, teaching there in 2012. And in this room, this group here, it seems I'm the only one from academia. And everyone else is from, no, your two? I oh, think so. okay, good. <laughs> But my my topic is not just for people from the academia, actually. Um, I like to lean on things, sorry. Um, but I choose this title, Using Interactive Multimedia to Create Game-Based Learning Environments. It's based on my experience so far as an educator. Um, so let me just get started here. So why am I talking about interactive multimedia? Um, anybody think they can live without internet for a day these days? You can. Okay. <laughs> I could. <laughs> All right. But for younger people, they get a little antsy, right? Like they don't, they can't, they just can't function without their phone or internet. And also, you know, everybody, almost every day, you probably use some form of multimedia, like video or audio, graphics on the internet or text, right? It's almost like a daily thing. So interactive multimedia, it's almost a necessity now. Everybody use it. And uh, according to a study is on average, people spend more than seven hours younger people that they conduct a study on average the teenagers spend over seven hours a day uh, consuming multimedia interactive multimedia so yeah that's almost like full-time job right every day so um but with this information overloading we have information all over okay on the internet uh, over their phone everything so how do we process that information right so there's so much to see, so much to hear, so much to read. Um, so how do we present all this information out there that's available to us? So here is my frustration um, um, came from, okay? It came from me teaching in a class and I found myself competing with uh, video games, okay? Um, many of my students are constantly playing video games, uh, and I, I'm just I cannot get their attention. While you lecture, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's I don't know. It's yeah. I I asked the other professor. It's it's kind of it's it, it's the same uh, uh, phenomenon all, in all classes. It doesn't matter what subject. It, they're always playing some sort of game on their phone or in a computer, or you know. On social media, of course. Um, so, so I'm thinking, well, how can I compete that, right? Video games. Since people are spending a lot of time you, uh, playing video games anyways, well, this is not just my idea. I did a little, res little research. Um, a lot of educators, okay, in the education community thinking of using video games for teaching. Okay, why, why, can, why do they, um, why do they want to do that? Because video games uh, has those characteristics that really engages a person in learning. That's interactivity, okay, because you actually involved personally. And also they have the challenge level, you know, you, you get, move up to a level whenever you get <coughs> certain um, points, I guess, you know. I don't know anybody play Candy Crush or something like that. You can keep on playing until you hit certain uh, level, then you get a awesome reward. <laughs> so, um, so video games seems like you know since this culture phenomena, people always using uh, 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 this multimedia, and we want to uh, create something positive out of uh, this. Uh, type of activity okay because when parents talking about all their kids playing video games is a very time time consuming it's dist it's distractive right it's uh, it's it's a way to procrastinate <laughs> so can we create something positive constructive um, using video games okay use it for uh, for a uh, good uh, learning uh, experience
So there's different subjects we teach in school, right? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEM education. So how can we use that for、uh, STEM education? Video games. Well, there's a lot of、uh, games out there.、Um, so we're gonna just take a few a look at the take a few examples to see how. The video games present the information to the kids. Usually, the video games made、uh, for the subject are for kids in the K through twelve grade. It's not very deep subject. Just getting the kids to interest because the kids very easily for them to be distracted, you know, with those games. So they made those games for them for learning subject like engineering, math,、um, aeronautics. Okay, even aeronautics. There's、uh, programs for that, and there are also video games created for humanities and social studies. Okay, for studying history, and like games like I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Anybody playing video games? Anyone here into video games? Yeah, the games are not just for 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 young boys anymore. There's games、uh, on social media where、right? you can play for a lot of women and. No, it doesn't matter what age you are. So, but there's the games we're talking about for education. There was or for history, civilization, Sim City, okay, Minecraft. That's another one, the big one. And、um, through part playing game, you learn history. You have to do research, history, ge geography,、um, urban planning, okay. And then there's also video games because there's people、um, advocate for using video games. There's also people post because they think video games are for antisocial. That's that's what creates so many violent video games. Like there's so many、um, young people. Killing other people these days. You have heard in the news, and unfortunately, very sad. People, those kids are the ones playing video. There's a bit,、uh, video gamers. Okay, so those are um, um, the people that's against the video games, the movement. But、um, to counteract that uh, that uh,、um, that claim, okay, video games are bad for kids because they create antisocial. Um, it's antisocial environment. So there's also video games created to、um, learn social behaviors, emotional intelligence, so that you're, you know how to deal with other people emotionally. Okay. So、um, there's a video game called If,、um, created for the purpose of teaching uh, sim uh, empathy or sympathy. Okay. Um, how do you sympathize with other people? And the kids playing those games, well, they learn to、um, bring all the characters in the game together who initially don't get along well. And the challenge is to,、um, well, listening to each other. Okay, listening is one practice in managing people's emotions. So how's my presentation so far? Not very good. I th well. I Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. If I can just keep on talking, 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 that's my present. That's how usually the the traditional lecture, you know,、uh, the the teacher speaking. Okay, that's a monologue. I'm speaking and speaking, and、uh, the audience is listening. So that's a very passive process. You're taking information. So that's I'm I'm just doing this. I I think I'm gonna lose all your attention if I keep on、uh, reading my lecture notes for another five minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here is the. I'm going to use actually multimedia in my presentation. Here is one video game.、Uh, how do I get back? Okay, hopefully this will work. I tried before lunch. It should work. It goes to that website. <clears throat> They create this video game、um, for kids to learn words and numbers. Okay. So, Martha, stay. Okay, to so catch treats and avoid obstacles, click、sprint. anywhere to、right. make skip sprint. Sprint means 
When you sprint, so click on you the run dog, really the fast, sprint. but only for a short distance. And the goal is to get the to collect dogs all the dog get trees. Tree, and as many trees as possible. You gotta click on the dog, you know, whenever you see there's a treats here. Okay. Oopsie. Otherwise, you get the burger. Um, it's like obstacle. Burger's obstacle, then you can get back. Oh, man! Words. So here the kids is doing the clicking. You 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 learn you use his eyes or hands according and then you know, sprint. Uh, you're trying to sprint. And there's a number on the upper um, oh, right corner recording how many treats the dog has clicked. So Oopsie far. doodle. Okay. Well since you're not playing, I, I mean oh, I've man. played a few times and can be addictive because you you just oh, man. you know, trying to collect a lot of Oh man! So just keep on playing and a nice sprint. <laughs> so that's the end Whoa, of the journey. Magnificent you, sprinting! You know how many? Uh, oh boy! Try catching more. Tr level. Okay. So click anywhere to make word. Lily hurdle. Hurdle. When you hurdle, so it means you jump over game, something that's blocking of just your way. Introducing the new word, it has Help a Lily collect all the dog treats. Uh, and also a, the camera how to count. Oopsie. Okay. So that's one Oopsie example. Doodle. I'm going to close it. Oopsie. So in the next example, um, actually it's a video showing how the teacher incorporates um, a sound. I wouldn't say it's not a video game. It's uh, it's an interactive system. Okay, interactive system to learn math. And I don't know how to get the volume. The only reason I quit teaching high school was because I really felt like I wasn't reaching all my kids, and that. That was the part that kept me up at night. And so I went back and got a PhD to be able to research that. Because the reason I dropped off from high school is that I I, I really don't like the, the way they, they teach the math. I don't know, I just didn't want to go to school. Kids like technology, they like video games. It's the fact that I'm not standing up there in front of the classroom just talking at them for an hour. They're actually moving and getting up and doing things. What we set out to do was to make an application to make math more approachable. I, I just feel that, that I, I want to do something, playing or something that interests me. We decided to use the connect and use the motion of the user because it's an easy piece of hardware to program for. Up until now, we really didn't have a way to touch the mathematics. And so when I first saw the connect sensor as it advertised as a video game, I thought, that's a way to touch mathematics. That's a way to get the kids who just are checked out that are going, yeah, well, I don't understand what, what this is doing, a chance to get their hands on graphing a line or graphing a parabola. It increases, the velocity, the first derivative is positive. As the function is decreasing, the velocity is negative. negative. A week later, I meet Jeb and Jack, and they've already programmed the first iteration of the software. And I met them, and I was just blown away. I mean, they took my idea, and they nailed it. They've really paid attention to that vision and thought, how can we make our vision come true? If students could use what they're learning earlier in their career, I think it would be more interesting to them. So when I first approached um, the guys that programmed this pro software for me, that's what I asked for. I said, can you make it? Just give me distance and time. Um, velocity acceleration would be nice. And I was interested about learning it, so we sought out a project that we could do, and we found these math teachers who needed to start piece of software to teach students. What they ended up doing was um, coming up with a graph that has color in it and a picture of the person walking. So now all of a sudden it's only interactive, but I can see myself as I actually walk in front of it and I can see the graph changing over time. We've talked about embodied thinking and that's really two pieces, the kinesthetic movement of your own body, but then that being able to empathize with what the movement needs to be in somebody else's body. You're gonna have to help them out here. Y equals so even if one person's running the connect, the rest of the class is having to give feedback on, oh no, you have to move your arm this way or you have to do this. Dynamic technology used in mathematics has been shown to significantly impact student learning. And that's the really beauty of it, is now I've got a relatively inexpensive sensor that can hook to the teacher's regular classroom computer. They don't need any special board mounted on the wall that's gonna cost thousands of dollars that will allow them to have all their kids be able to interact with mathematics in this 
tremendous way. Okay, so that one, the last one uh, we just saw, that was for um, learning the math. I don't know if you you caught that. It's learning the just the parabola how it works. Then so the student actually get up and move to make real application of. I mean, what's the point of learning a, a second order function, right? <laughs> so yeah, the student moves and see they see how the the, the lines change. So make real meaning out of what they learn. That's something really abstract. So I think it's it's a good example of incorporating interactive programs, okay, into uh, a lecture. So the next one is a video game I talked about. That's for emotional intelligence for kids to learn um, empathy. And here is just a snapshot. Oops. What is okay? Snapshot of the game. Okay, just a dialogue. But I want to just, it's actually on the PBS news. It's a news clip. NPR news. If you're around teens or tweens, you already know this. They don't talk on the phone, they text. In fact, kids are growing up immersed in so much technology that many people worry they're losing the ability to communicate and solve problems directly with one another. Researchers have documented declines in empathy. But as NPR's Steve Henn reports, Silicon Valley thinks it has a solution, another video game. More than 30 years ago, Trip Hawkins left Apple Computer and founded Electronic Arts. You know, the company behind EA Sports. But the man who helped make Madden football into a cultural icon, whose former company encourages gamers to spend hundreds of millions of hours pretending to play sports instead of actually playing them, that guy has a new vision for games. Trip Hawkins wants to teach. Yes, absolutely. In fact, we're trying to figure out how to use a business model like what I did previously with EA Sports. Basically, Hawkins brings game designers together with experts in a field. In the case of sports, it was athletes and statisticians. Now Hawkins is bringing counselors into the mix. He wants to give those counselors a lot of information about what kids are doing in the games they play. Analyzing data and how people play has become a huge part of the gaming industry. It's incredibly important, and it's one of these things where in the past you couldn't do it at all because the customer was playing the game in the basement on a machine that's not hooked up to the Internet. Once you bring the Internet into the equation, you get these metrics on every little twist and turn, and, and then it's much, much easier to figure out what your problem is and, and how to improve the product. For game designers, data analysis has become an incredibly powerful tool. I think I'm out of time, so I'm going to fast forward this. Well, I can uh, use the Magash's time since he's not here. We are. We're beyond it. Seven minutes already. Oh, okay. Keep going. That's it. It's so okay. Let's, let's move on to the next, keep what the next, next slide is. Yeah, but the point here is, okay, they create this game here. The last example I'm going to show you is not in ac for academia, but for industry. Um, I don't know, any of you use a simulation for training your employees for safety or, uh, procedures? Welcome to State okay. Funds Has okay. Up because Safety Training there's Simulator. there's a lot of project in our this school. This 3D simulator was designed videos. to instruct workers to have fewer accidents at training. work sites. Um, it could be expensive, but some say it saves the money for the employer later, you know, hiring trainers or train them individually. Okay, I don't know. So here's just an example of a simulation, a training to teach them safety. Um, In construction, the worker is told to finish seeding the roof with plywood. The worker must complete this task while being tested. In so they have a list of options. What do they need to do when they uh, run into a situation? So that's a form of training. Handling, okay. Hydration and general safety. The simulator is designed to allow the worker to make. So 
So that's another uh, area of application. Move this. Now it's not moving. Okay. I had to take an on, uh, online defensive driving course to avoid having some points put on my license, and part of it was. Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's already being used that type of uh, training. So the final discussion, there's, you know, you see there's a lot of potentials. It can be used not just in school, right? It's, it's in business and in um, uh, industry. So, there is, so what can we go from there? So there's two challenges in, um, in developing um, this type of application. So how do we, for people to play this game, video game, it got to be interesting, right? Right, you got to be engaging. So, how do you make a video game uh, interesting? Well, you need to create a, a develop a narrative or storyline uh, for the game, and for different types of learning. For example, you know, not just for um, uh, learning uh, like a problem solving. It's a narrative it can be narrative problem. What if, what if how do you make narrative for studying history, right? So it takes a lot of thinking and creativity. And another uh, challenge is how do we integrate video games uh, with traditional classroom teaching seamlessly? Okay, we saw example earlier. They use a, a interactive uh, program pretty uh, very well. Okay, um, smoothly with the lecture. So that's a good example. But not all video games are good for, for, for classroom settings. So that's just a couple challenges um, people need to um, address for those of who are interested in developing video games for education. And uh, developing video games is really uh, a collaboration. It's a very inter, uh, interdisciplinary uh, work. It's not just uh, design, art. And it has engineering, programmers, and psychology. You know, there's a lot of different subject involved for creating a good game. So that's my presentation. And sorry for going over time. Thank you, Jade. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah.